Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are a newbie over here, welcome to Candid with Coco, where we have a lot of candid conversations. This is a safe space. So please subscribe and join in on the conversations. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being patient, for being understanding and coming back. I really do appreciate you being here. So as you can tell from the title of today's video, I'm going to be unpacking the most tumultuous chapter of my life, okay, of my life. <laughs> um, I'm able to be, I think, a little more cheerful or like more calm about this because I am not where I once was a year ago. So a lot of healing has happened, um, a lot of tears have been cried. Not to say that I don't get triggered, not to say that it doesn't affect me sometimes, but I'm not where I once was. And I really want to thank my family and friends for holding it down, holding me down, for praying for me, for encouraging me, for reminding me um, that this too shall pass in different ways. I really am thankful. But anyway, let's get into today's video. So I think... Uh, about a year or so ago, I filmed a video where I just spoke about my life and where it was at that time and I spoke about being in love and meeting somebody and um, yeah, just how happy I was at this point. Um, yeah, so the person that I was talking about is the father of my daughter, the one who just popped up onto this channel, you know, a year later. <laughs> yeah, um, so I just want to give a little bit of a short backstory as to what happened and where we are now because this is a life update right so I met him in 2020 of June um, we officially met on my birthday of that year and um, from there there was a lot of like getting to know each other conversations and all of that eventually it led to us being within Mjolo you know um, and seemingly we started um working at the same place i found out about the job i linked him and then eventually i applied for the same job and we started working in the same place we were personal trainers at a gym um and yeah mjolo was nice mjolo was sweet it was good it was hashtag love his hair um and in the next year so that being march 2021 i found out that i was expecting my little princess um obviously that was not the plan because i have always envisioned that i would get married first and then i'd have the child you know um but you know <laughs> we make plans but god loves and as much as there was a lot of emotions around that um you know I, I, I felt like I really disappointed myself being that I'm a Christian and I really didn't want to do it that way that's what it was but you know every child is a blessing from God and I never want to take away from that so anyway we're excited we're expecting and um, we had a conversation before this even happened about what the end goal of our relationship would be and we were both in sync of the fact that we want to be together for the purpose of marriage. So marriage was always something that seemingly we both looked to. So we informed our families and um, as it would be, they said, okay, cool, let's now get into the procedures of you two being married. So the months are going by, my baby is growing, appointments are had, um, he's showing up, it's an amazing time. Um, and then, on the 9th of October, we tie the knot. At that time, I was eight months pregnant. <clears throat> and we have our wedding. Thank goodness I didn't give birth on the day. Um, but yeah, it was an amazing day. Um, filled with love, celebration, people who loved us, who could make it at the time. And um, on the 19th, of the next month being November my daughter was born so the days leading up to that um, I actually went to the hospital to do my final checkup and didn't expect it but I had to get booked in because they said the baby's full term 
she can't be chilling in your stomach anymore we pretty much are going to have to induce you so i mean this goes against everything i wanted i wanted a natural birth but hey it doesn't doesn't mean you won't get a natural birth but usually inducing means you wind up having a c-section so um i got booked in um that was i think on the 18th and during that time there was a breakdown of communication between me and my then husband he was in his feels about things that i truly till this day didn't understand because it was a lot of i think but the doctors are saying you know so i mean i will always go over medical advice over anyone's opinion and um, this was health of my, myself my daughter so the breakdown in communication happened um i had to have a an emergency c-section um due to the fact that my daughter just did her thing in my stomach um but i don't like to, i don't want to like delve into the whole <laughs> nitty gritty because i will not lie i had a very um, horrible birthing experience because number one um, I gave birth in a public hospital and at the time there was still lockdown regulations and they didn't allow for any person um, other than the person who was giving birth to be in the maternity ward or in the labor ward to be exact so I was alone um, physically I, I was grateful that I was able to talk to my family and friends over the phone but it's not the same this was my first birth I was scared um, to have somebody by your side would have been better and the other reason why I didn't have a great birthing experience was because due to the breakdown in communication between me and my then husband he decided to basically blue tick me throughout that experience so I felt very alone and I never want to negate from the fact that my friends and my family were talking to me and really encouraging me through the process but I think when you have created a human being with somebody and there's this anticipation and you know the months have gone by and you've both been going to these appointments and you're excited for you to be somewhat left alone emotionally already physically you can't be there but emotionally you're not even wanting to avail yourself just because there's a minor misunderstanding that already it dented a lot it dented a lot um so yeah that was a really horrible time um but the best part was my daughter that she entered this world so on the 19th she was born and she was healthy and beautiful and i was okay nothing happened to me that went into complications or anything so thank god um but during that time my then husband was still not in communication with me um i felt like a single mom yeah i think i was already prepping to be a single mom because really and truly i was alone you know like as in the parent i was the parent so things were just escalating a bit further than they needed to be um there was a lot of help that was being offered i mean um families tried to sit down and you know reason within this matter but it seemed like there was just no breakthrough you know um and it mounted up to a point where it just didn't need to get there but it did and I, the one thing that really stood out for me in that experience was um just how characters were being displayed and one day i'll delve into it i don't want to go into too much detail and i also want to like say this is my truth um obviously there is two sides to a story and there's the truth but this is my truth you know and it led to a point where i got served divorce papers um on the 10th of march i remember this because on that day i had a job interview on zoom and just a few hours before it my divorce papers were served <laughs> so yeah um that happened and i basically realized that i had to start preparing for the end yeah so 
months went by with conversations between the courts and myself and my then husband and everything um, a date was set aside and um, as God would have it the day after my birthday was when my court proceedings for my divorce was set I always say God has a sense of humor I think these are the instances where I can see you know so yeah um, that time arrived and I was de de declared single by law again <laughs> so yeah I want to say um, a few things about why I'm sharing my story number one I believe that my life is a testimony and I don't know who I could impact with my life story but I do believe that somebody might watch this and be able to be inspired to know that they're not alone um, there were so many things that went on I won't sugarcoat everything because you know but I, I, amongst many of the things that happened I mean my bags rather my clothes were brought to my parents home in black plastic bags and you know there was just so many things that just mounted up to a point where it broke my soul it really broke my soul um, and I don't want to make this video to encourage divorce because that's not it God hates divorce God is not a God who celebrates the breakdown of a marriage if anything the best union in God's eyes in his ministry is marriage and I believe in marriage wholeheartedly but I don't believe it's something to be toyed with I don't believe people's hearts are to be toyed with um, and so I don't want this to be a hey hashtag divorce him brigade no um, but more so to show you that even when life throws lemons at you you can make lemonade I know it's cliche but in true 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 essence I think that's the thing that I'm somewhat drawing from my journey because I'm still healing and I'm still getting to the place that I think I need to be and I know it, it's never a destination healing is constant and my heart isn't where it once was I don't trust the same way anymore I don't unfortunately I don't view men the same way um, I'm, a, I'm a lot guarded if my walls were 10 feet high now they're like 50 feet high and to some degree I'm grateful because I want to protect my heart with everything in me but at the same time I recognize that at some point I'm going to need to let down my walls and open myself to love but that will come when God knows it's time the other thing is I on my own had no strength to walk away um, it was a hard decision and I'm really grateful that at that time because I had given birth and I was here at my mom's house so because in African cultures usually you have to be with your mom after you give birth and then they help you through that process so I was grateful that I was around family and they were holding me down and in the days or on the days rather where I was not able to do what I needed to do because I mean the first year of motherhood you're so tired but more than tired you're actually like your child depends on you so much so to be able to have that village around me really did help because there were some days where I, I got so caught up in being a mom I neglected myself and then I'll crash so I really am grateful to God that I had my village um, and also my daughter my daughter gave me the strength to step away from something that I could see was going to be extremely toxic not just for myself but for her the story is always how, you know, it's important for a child to have both parents in a home and it's important to, you know, have a happy home. But people never discuss how a happy home can also mean parents in their respective homes, you know, because what makes a happy home is happy parents. And it would have served no one any good, not even my daughter, if she grew up in an environment where she saw just downright unhappiness or toxicity or just negative 
behaviors you know so yeah and lastly choosing yourself is one of the hardest things to do it's so simple in practice though it's not easy you have to understand that when the divorce happened i didn't just automatically turn off my emotions towards this person i didn't just all of a sudden stop loving them and that's the hardest part having to fight through all those emotions am i making the right decision but i still love them is this the best thing for me my heart is here but my mind shows me that nah bro you need to get out you know and i think we don't always talk about how hard it is to choose yourself but i always um encourage that like the pain i feel now is just for this moment i will feel a whole lot better when i look back at what i'm overcoming at this point in time yeah so that's my two cents <laughs> i hope you guys have been inspired um you've drawn some gems from my story um and yeah all that so this is me now 20 something single mom divorced figuring my life out but hey god is writing my story so this too shall pass thank you guys so much for watching please don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll see you guys in my next video take care